Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of the DAN Show, and welcome to my final 2021 NFL preview video, as today I'm breaking down the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But before I get started, if this is your first time here, you're brand new to the channel, it's got one simple question to ask you. Do you like football? Because if so, you're in the right place. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ring the bell. That way you can be notified every time I come out with a new video. If you've been here before, you know the drill. You give me a thumbs up and you drop a comment below with your opinion. Ultimately, these videos are simply a conversation starter. I offer my opinion, but I want to hear from you and I want to hear what you think. Here's how this video is going to work. I'm going to give you three things I like about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, followed up by three things I don't like about the Bucs. But stick around to the end where I break down the Vegas over-under and I reveal if I'm going to put action down on the Bucs this year. So let's get started with the three things I like about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First thing I like about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is that all starters return. Uh, this is the first time since 1978 when the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, repeated um, that every starter returns on a team. Uh, and, and you know what? It actually gets better because the second thing I like is that both coordinators return. Now, I, I was really shocked that both these guys would come back. I figured one or the other. Now, I will always believe that Todd Bowles just got a terrible deal with the Jets. Uh, basically, uh, his last two years there, um, he was able to build a young, talented defense, and he, wanted to, he was allowed to build it from the ground up. He drafted uh, Jamal Adams and Marcus May in the first and second round. They started right away, and he was going to build a uh, front seven around these two great safeties, and then... The next year, they draft a raw redshirt sophomore quarterback out of USC, Sam Darnold. Well, you put a young defense with a rookie 21-year-old quarterback. He really should have been at USC for another year. Now he's talented enough to have uh, been drafted high, but the Jets had to trade up. They gave up multiple picks, um, including the, the, the picks the Colts used to draft Quinn and Nelson and Darius Leonard. So I thought he got a bad deal, and the offensive coordinator, Byron Leftwich, it's really just a matter of time before he's going to be an NFL head coach. I actually thought he was going to be an NFL head coach in 2020, or I'm sorry, in 2021, but more than likely both of these guys will get interviews, and it wouldn't surprise me if both of these get head coaching jobs in 2022. And the third thing I like about Tampa Bay Buccaneers is that this is going to be year two for Tom Brady and Bruce Arians' offense. Look, when I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong, and, and I wasn't sure Brady would fit in Bruce Arians' offense. Arians has a reputation as a, a quarterback whisperer, but all of his quarterbacks have been tight end-sized quarterbacks with rocket arms, and while Brady does have a decent deep ball, uh, his game really excelled at the short and intermediate game with his uh, super unnatural ability to read and dissect defenses. See, I really didn't think that the Arians-Brady thing would really work out, but this was the second time in Tom Brady's career where he's thrown for uh, 40 or more touchdowns. I knew in 2007 he had the 50 touchdowns, but I naturally assumed he's gone uh, at least 40 at least one other time. No, he hasn't. This was the second highest touchdown total in his career with 40 and he had 4,633 passing yards. He's only surpassed that four other times. Now, his 65.7% completion percentage, um, he surpassed that multiple times. But his career average in New England, 63.8. See, in Bruce Aaron's offense, it's, it's completely different than what they do in New England in most NFL systems. You go deep first, and then you come back. In most offenses, you go short to deep. In Aaron, you go deep to short. It, it Basically, you try to hit the deep ball a lot more often than you do in, in a standard NFL offense. Now, quarterbacks change systems quite a bit. It's not unheard of for a quarterback to have multiple different offensive coordinators in their career. But Tom Brady did something one way for over 20 years. I fully expected him to have more bumps and bruises and, and a much larger learning curve than what he did. Bottom line, he's going to have a second year to learn this offense, and you bring both coordinators back, 
and the rest of your starters as well, NFL, you're in a lot of trouble. Now, there are three things I do not like about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First thing I don't like about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is their aging vets, and, and let's just not even touch Brady. Uh, you have Dominican Sue, who's the other surefire Hall of Famer on this team. He turns 35 in January. Their other starting defensive ends, William Golson, he, he's 30. A uh, newly signed Levante David turns 32 in January. JPP, Jason Pierre Paul's 33 in January. Now, Shaquille Barrett's 29, but after leading the NFL in sacks two years ago with 19 and a half, he only had eight last year. So when you when your sack production drops by more than more than half, it, it kind of leads me to believe that you're on the decline as a player. The other four starters I mentioned are clearly on the decline decline. Their best days are behind them. With Shaquille Barrett, I'm leaning towards that uh towards that analysis just because 19 and a half sacks versus eight, even though he is on uh even though he's 29, not 30. Uh Rob Gronkowski, 32, visibly not the same player. Same thing with Antonio Brown, who's 33. And the age on the vets, uh, this goes hand in hand, and it's directly connected to the second thing I don't like about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that's the lack of depth on this team. This might appear nitpicky considering the talent that's on this team, but when you have an older team combined with an extra game, uh, the wear and tear is going to going to cause a little more of an effect. Plus, as reigning Super Bowl champions, you're going to get every team's best game. Now, this team was lucky and they entered the playoffs healthy last year. Key starters that were injured during the regular season came back healthy for the playoffs. And this is a common thing for all Super Bowl teams that you have to enter the playoffs healthy. But uh, bottom line, when you have an older team, you have nagging injuries that that really just don't heal as quickly. So the combination of older team and lack of depth is, is going to be the Bucks' main thing that they have to overcome in uh, 2021. Now, the third thing I don't like about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is I do have secondary concerns. Last year, uh, Tampa Bay was uh, number one defensively in rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, and yards per carry. Teams did not and could not uh, run against the Tampa Bay Bucks. However, uh, Hall of Fame quarterback Tom Brady, who we talked about earlier, had a completion percentage of 65.7. That wasn't as good as opponents passing against Tampa Bay uh, with 69% uh, completion percentage against. Now, Tampa Bay did have 15 interceptions, which was uh, uh, tied for seventh in the NFL, and 48 sacks, which was tied for fourth. But their secondary is clearly their weakness, and the best player of that secondary last year was Antoine Winfield. He was a rookie who I think will actually get better. I really love this kid coming out of Minnesota. But the young corners uh, that this team has really need to take an additional step up. And if you're asking why, it's because it's extremely unlikely you're going to be number one in rush attempts, rush yards, rush touchdowns, and yards per carry again. Going into 2021, you have to assume that you're not going to be the best uh, rushing or run-stopping team in the NFL and get 48 sacks. Now, you could get 48 sacks again because you got rookie Joe Turan, uh, who will probably play a little bit this year, ideally not very much. And then Devin White, uh, your second-year stud linebacker who had nine last year, probably will be used in the same uh, capacity of uh, blitzing and, and getting sacks. So while there are a lot of good pieces on the Bucks, you do have to worry about that secondary. To recap, the three things I don't like about the Bucks is the aging vets, which goes hand in hand with the lack and de lack of depth, and there are secondary concerns on this team. Now, this is the advanced class. This is the money making part of the show where I break down the Vegas over under and I reveal if I'm going to put action down on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The over under uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is 12 and uh, over 12 wins is negative 120 which means that if you think the Bucs are going to win more than 12 games you wager you have to wager $120 to win 100 but if you like the Bucs to win under 12 games it's even money a $100 wager will win you 100 to win the NFC South is negative 310, means you have to wager $310 to win 100. And to win the NFC is plus 
200, so a $100 wager will win you 200. Last year, the Saints won the NFC South for the fourth straight year. Uh, Tampa Bay went 11-5, and five, but they did lose all five games against playoff opponents, and after their bye, they, they went undefeated, went to the playoffs, of course, ran straight to the playoffs. I really like this football team. Um, I like them to win over 12 games. They are my favorites to win the NFC South, and they are my favorites to win the NFC. Uh, Kansas City is plus 250 to win the AFC, so if you're going to bet on a team to uh, win the division, uh, Tampa Bay at plus 200 is the worst number that's that's available, and for them to win the division at negative 310 is also the worst number. Kansas City is a negative 300. Now, you may think this is a little crazy, but I actually like over 12, and I like to win the NFC. I, I would skip the NFC South completely, but I, at plus 200, you're exactly getting 2-1 to one odds for Tampa Bay to repeat as a NFC champ, and, and I really like that. I, again, I don't like negative 310 to win the division, uh, Again, the Saints won the division for four straight years. What I do like is that if Tom Brady gets into the playoffs, he has the ability to win on the road, just like he did last year. And I really like this Tampa Bay Bucks team. I really think that they're built for the playoffs. So, yeah, I like them as my NFC favorites. And even though two to one odds, you know, plus 200 is a bad number, I like that a lot more. And I like the negative 310 to win the division. So, I'm going to pass putting action down on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but if you are going to bet on Tampa Bay, I would strongly suggest uh, take over 12. And and to be honest with you, I, I do take the two to one odds for them to get back to the Super Bowl. So listen, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. It means the absolute world to me. And don't forget, give me a thumbs up. And most important, drop a comment below. These videos are simply conversation starters all for what I think. I really want to hear from you, your opinions, what's important. And also, if you're watching the premiere, which I'm releasing on Friday, you are in for a treat because I go live. I will be live tonight, 7.15 Central Standard Time. Preseason is over, and in six days you get to watch Tampa Bay start the season at home against the Dallas Cowboys. I'm excited. If you're watching this, you're excited. Join the show tonight. Have all your questions answered. It's going to be a great show. I will see you later tonight.